Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in because this is an experiment and this is going to be my reaction to My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 24, the penultimate episode. I am so excited. Last we left off, 1A convinced Deku to stay and it was beautiful and Bakugo had like the biggest leap in character development that I think I have ever seen in an anime. It was beautiful. Now I think it's Baraka's time to shine. I, I hope, I hope that she confesses and that she protects Deku against the horde of people who are scared for their lives. So it's, it's very understandable, but, but I mean like, come on, man. It's gonna be beautiful. Let's see 1A protect Deku from the people, which is totally like flipped. It should be the heroes protecting the people from the bad guys, but like, that's where we are. MHA is in a state of just chaos, but from chaos spouts beautiful things some of the time. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into this. Yeah, I mean, one barrier is good, but what about the villains that can fly? Oh my gosh, I finally get the subtitles for the intro. Oh wow, this is very, very in character. This is actually beautiful. Now that I know what the intro means, I'm just... Wow, that's moving. That's beautiful. Yeah! Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I'm sorry, did you make it like decay proof? Okay, but how? What? ルートを敵に移動する。I'm Okay. I mean, those are the things that got you in your situation, right? He's an animal that was experimented on. That's just a little too much. U UA has become the anti-Tartarus. What the heck? Okay, but now... Oh, Deku looks so sad. No, he won't. Sorry, what? That's adorable. He's actually like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that. So suddenly your voice is magnified. So you're just putting it all out in the open, okay, good. Wow. <laughs> Endeavor in a trench coat and a fedora. Uh-oh. I mean, yes. Whoa. No. Oh my gosh, Deku. He's about to collapse. He's about to give up. He's about to get out. Give out. Oh, please. There Oh, yeah, that's right. She's fighting for you. 
Yeah, she's doing the exact same thing you are. Wow. The people, right? See? <laughs> wow. Because they saved you. Araka, you amazing person. Oh, good. Yes, good. should be doing okay now this guy has been there since the beginning right yeah no not really exactly wow yeah Dang. Yeah, there's no stage anymore. Wow. This is amazing. Like this guy was in the first episode. And he was just he was literally just an extra. Just a face in the crowd. Dude, do not speak up. You're wearing an all might t-shirt. I mean that's that's what he's been fighting for, but. Tears, tears in his eyes. Yeah, in a, in a very nice way of putting it, yeah. Uh huh, and that's what started this whole thing. Yes, very much so. Yeah, she's the best. Oh, Hawks. Hawks looks like he's gonna cry. みんなのことを思えたなら。ヒーローが暇を持て余す。笑っちまうくらい明るい未来です。ああ、he <笑> オッケー、オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。
emotional or something. Somebody who's very in tune with the emotions of others. Maybe it's in an empathy way? I, I am not very good with psychological terms. I should have written things down because like I'm trying to remember now like what's going on. Oh, oh, let's let's talk about the thing that left me slack jawed for half an episode or for like a quarter of the episode. Principal Nezu, what the heck? <laughs> what the? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, gosh, gosh. Like what? <laughs> That's like what the moment when he said UA can move. I was like, what? Like, like, like the book of Avon in in Soul Eater. Like, like that level of movement. But no, it, like Soul Eater kind of made it comical and made like the entire school a robot with hands and legs. Which I don't think they did that in the manga, by the way. I don't know. Soul Eater is one of those anime that I'm just, I am continuously wanting them to make a second season or like a part two. I want, I want them to make a part two, but I want the part two to be accurate to the manga because stuff happens. <laughs> anyway, this is different. He made, he made UA an underground facility. He's able to get all of the evacuees out of UA if the heroes attempt anything. What? <laughs> That's so crazy to me. If All For One were to attack this school right now, is it decay proof? And they have measures against Toga? And like they're working on Kurogiri behind the scene? The hero's journey is like a plan of a story. And I can tell that this is like the, the end of the abyss period. The hero's journey has several steps and one of them is like where the hero's flying high and he's on cloud nine and he's doing all that he can to beat the bad guys or to accomplish his own personal goals. And then he hits rock bottom like almost immediately, which happened. Like the, the whole war arc was basically like the, we're gonna do this, we're gonna end all for one, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna dispose of Shigaraki. Like it, it, it was this one big beautiful symbol of just hope and, and we're finally gonna end the villains. And then it just went like not even like this, like that. And Deku was in this horrible dark place. He has hit rock bottom. And now the people that have to pick him up are the people that he saved. Deku has been a hero to Uraraka in so many different ways. It's amazing the kind of stuff that she saved him from. Like she saved him first step into UA, she saved him. And he has saved her multiple times over by just being a role model for her and, and a, a love interest. And now she's saving him by basically encouraging these people full of distrust and unease to be more like the crowds she saw when she was a kid, when the heroes were rescuing them. The heroes are beaten down and tired after their fight. The thing that makes it all worth it, because as we've learned, the life of a hero is more than just saving people. It's, it's, it's putting on a good impression. It's keeping up their image. It's not showing weakness, even in the worst of times. Being a hero is hard and it's terrible sometimes for some people, especially if you're like a member of the commission. But the thing that makes it all worth it is the people who stand by and watch you and cheer. Which is why I was so glad when the Bunny Girl and, and, and Coda ran out of the crowd and came to comfort him because honestly, Deku on his knees, head to the ground, was the same position that he was in when All Might offered him his power. Because it was the same moment for, for Izuku, it was the same emotions felt, just being so overcome by finally being validated by the person you look up to. But here it's like the common man. I mean, that 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 guy with the spikes, he was there from the beginning. I remember I remember seeing a post that that came out where somebody had like gone into the manga. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was before the Dark Deku arc came out in the manga because this whole speech wasn't in it. But like they had gone through the manga and just circled the times when this guy's face was in the crowd. And apparently it was a lot. This guy was just standing by watching the heroes do amazing things. Our heroes. I love that Uraraka did this because in a way she kind of outshines almost everybody but Ida and Bakugo in the previous episode. Ida connected to Midoriya and by extension connected all of 1A to Midoriya. Bakugo strengthened that connection by bearing his soul. Now Uraraka is connecting the people to Midoriya, and it was like one of the most beautiful things ever. 
with the music and and Aerie and I feel like if Aerie had been out there she would have run to him too and who knows maybe used her quirk to just clear away all the dirt and the grime that would have been adorable but then when Hawks and Endeavor come in and they see like we're, we're making progress basically the two heroes who are mainly at fault the, the the father of Dobby and the killer hero with a villain's background just finally seeing that they are making progress I also love the sort of touch of people to turning like turning to genist in these times because they can no longer trust hawks or endeavor so basically best genist is like the the one shining hope left although that hope is like going out slowly here's the thing about that man's speech he said there is no more stage and usually the people are sitting in the audience watching the heroes perform on the stage but now the stage is destroyed which means that the heroes are on the same playing field as the people now they are equal and now they have to join together and unite against this common enemy of the villains but also just this bleak situation because if they hold each other up then everyone is a hero and everything is going to be all right. Ah, oh, I, I, I love, I love this episode almost as much as last one. Oh, I love it, I love it. It's so great. My Hero Academia is one of the best anime out there. I feel like if Attack on Titan had a worthy successor, it would be MAJ because, well, first of all, Deku's better than Eren. <laughs> But secondly, it, MHA teaches a valuable lesson in the best possible way. Whereas Attack on Titan was showing us a lesson that needs to be taught. The ends do not justify the means. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh gosh. Back to Principal Nezu for like a very, for like a sentence and a half. He said that he was not able to make that step because he was mainly just using his quirk. Technically Nezu is still like a little uh, a cuckoo. <laughs> I remember the exam. I remember his evil laugh when he basically could have killed Mina and, and Denki. He, he doesn't, I think Nezu might lack the emotional strength to deal with the people. So he shows how much he cares through his quirk and his intelligence. As safe as UA is, there are still people who are scared and that wasn't on him. It took somebody who was very attuned to the emotional stability of other people, Uraraka, to finally bridge the gap. So, um, yeah. Nezu aside. Monoma. Monoma with Eri. Th I mean, this is, again, like a small thing, but it really goes to show how Monoma's just like, his his manic, erratic personality is only a front that he puts on to rile up his opponents so they can rush him, he can touch them, and then use their quirk against them. That's like his whole persona that he puts on. But in reality, I mean, he cared about Eri in the brief moment that he uh, assessed her quirk. So it's nice that she's trusting him even though Miria said he's the bad side of UA. But yeah, I think that's all. So be sure to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications. You don't have to, but it, I am trying to make this a source of income for me, so it'd be super, super cool if you did. Comment below, tell me your theories, your analyses. We're coming to the end of the, of the anime, and to be honest, I think that that spoiler that I was hoping for is not going to be revealed next episode, which is fine. Yeah, just tell me, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think is gonna happen next comment how amazing Uraraka is in the best possible way. So uh, thank you for staying and have a nice day.